So in problem 2.1.8, we have four cards with the values $1, $2, $3, and $6. We'll pay $4, we'll select two cards, and we'll get the sum of the numbers on those two cards. Now, I didn't even notice this the first time I did this problem, but if you're going to draw two cards and get the sum, then this means you would be drawing without replacement, as in you can't count the same card twice. Because there's only four, you draw two, you're not putting it back, it doesn't sound like to me. I think you would be drawing it without replacement. And the answer in the textbook makes it clear that they did it without replacement. So to do this, I'm going to draw a little table here. So across the top, I'll get what I put on my first card. So one, two, three, and six. And my second card has the choices one, two, three, and six. Now I can't actually get a one and a one because it's without replacement. But a one and a two, if I add that together, I'll get three. One and three gives me four. One and six gives me seven. One and two is three. Two and two, I can't actually get that because it's without replacement. Two and three is five, two and six is eight, so let's just, I'll have you finish this. So this helps me find my sample space. And my possible values are threes, fours, five, seven, eight, and nines. Okay, so now let's come over here and write down what my possible sums are. So my possible sums are three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. And then let's find our actual x that we're interested in. Which remember, our x is our net winnings. So we don't actually win the value on the cards because we had to pay $4 first. So if I win $3 but I had to pay $4, then 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1. And 4 minus 4 would give me 0. 5 minus 4 is 1. Th not 2, 3. 4 and 5. So those are the possible values that I can win. Now let's find the probability of each one. Let's see, so how many ways could I get a 3? So there is one, one, two ways to get a 3. So 2 out of a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 2 out of 12, which gives me 1 sixth. Okay, for a 4, I had 1, 2 fours. So 2 out of 12, which gives me 1 sixth. For fives, it looks like there was two of those, which is again going to give me one sixth. Two eights is one sixth. Oh, two sevens. Two eighths was also one sixth, and two nines was also one sixth, because each of them had a probability of two out of twelve or one sixth. So that is my PMF. Okay, so we just found our PMF. These are my possible x values, these are my probabilities. Now, let's find the CDF. The CDF is our cumulative distribution function. The way you're going to find your cumulative distribution function is find the probability of everything up to and including that number. Our textbook likes to kind of just do this all in one table, but I didn't leave quite enough room. So here's my x values, and then we'll put our CDF, f of x, put an i to tell us this for each one. So my x values are negative 1, 0, 1, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so my probability up to and including this negative 1 was 1 6. But for the 0, there's 1 6 and 1 6, so we're at 2 6. For 1, we're at 1 6, 1 6, and 1 6, so 3 out of 6. And so forth, it turns out it's just 3 out of 6, 4 out of 6, 5 out of 6, and Six out of six. So that is our cumulative distribution function. So it's the probability of everything up to and including negative one. The probability of everything up to and including zero.